I got Dave, out here before you. Yes, you did get out yeah. here before me. Yeah. Are you very proud of yourself? No, I'm just making sure that I, I, I got here first. Okay. First trip of the week. So, Hole's got harness already. Lose little man. Hey. Nice fresh plats. Go and see Chris. See what he's going to do for your eye. And then next will be Maybelline. Hole didn't want to get her out first because obviously being on her diet, she needed to consume her hay ball first. Like she gets pod on the eye. She does get quite angry about it, doesn't she? Really angry. I can't blame her, you know, when, when a woman's hungry, you get hangry, don't you, don't you, Mabes? I'm only hungry if, if I don't eat by about six o'clock. For those that don't remember, Chris is going to be having a look to see whether he can help close the eye a little bit to help blink, because he can't completely close his eye at the moment. So we've been putting lo lots of balm all around here to try and soften that leathery skin. Hmm. Stop number one. We're at Veterinary Vision in Penrith and Hannes is going to come off and go to see Chris Dixon to see whether he wants to do the op with him today. And we'll just have to watch Mabel because Mabel doesn't like being on her own so if she sees Hannes going out the way she may get a little restless, but given that she's got food, we're hoping that she stays quite happy because the plan is that we'll drop Hannes here. Then we've got to take Mabel over for her x-rays. So with any luck, Chris will be able to see Hannes fairly quickly so that we can get you round the corner within the next 30 minutes. So Hannes is going to stop here while we just head across round the corner with Mabel for her x-rays. We're around the corner now at frames, Stop waiting two. for Sam. Stop number two. Yeah. Mabel's not too stressed being on her own. It's mainly just because she's got food, which is rare these days. Yeah, that's Hannes's hay net, actually, that you're eating. Have you already finished yours? No, it's because she's working smarter, not harder. <laughs> she's in heaven now. not throwing it out to the side like she was originally. That's the most exercise she's done in him. So what's this for? It's just to fill the frog in so you doesn't, doesn't the cleft and shut too much. Oh okay. So you for some reason, somebody found out that Play-Doh is the same x-ray density as foot. Oh, wow. So it fills in the gas shadows. I once uh, ran out of Play-Doh when I got some plasticine from the play shop, and it does not work the same at all. Because it's just, it, it, plasticine is a lot denser. Yeah. And it shows up on the x-ray. It's a big white mark, whereas Play-Doh... Whereas play I wonder what it is that's different about it. It does feel a bit more plasticky, doesn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. It doesn't feel quite as mm. doughy. There you go. Why is it important then for, for those clefts not to show up in an x ray? Just because they can confuse. Um, just so you, the refractor shows up more clearly if you haven't got the, uh, the gas shadow. I'm just waiting outside while Mabel has her x rays. We'll go in and look at the results with Sam. I mean, let me look and see where the, 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 the original, original one is here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Because this was the bit, wasn't it? Is that, that, is that from the same angle? Yeah, so, I mean, it's very slightly rotated, but essentially it's the same. I mean, that's the. If you look here, this, this is the pedal bone. Yeah. Tipped up. And this is the pedal bone here. So I mean, it's, so, it's so, slightly rotated, but very minimally. So that shadow there yeah. is where the fracture was. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Yeah. You know, it looks, it's a lot less prominent. Looks like it's doing okay. And okay. The, I mean, the, the other thing is just the level of soundness. Should we just 
just be putting really small turnouts for yeah. now. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd consider getting a shoe back onto it to, um, particularly if it's got clips on it, it'll all give the foot the a bit more support. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, the, the, the hoof, the hoof splints the pedal bone pretty effectively. Mm. You know, it, it does does expand a bit as they put the foot down, but not much. But if you've got side clips on, it just restricts that movement just a little bit more. But so in terms of like her actually doing anything, we just sort of build her up slowly. If she yeah, very much so, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Neil said originally that we'd be driving her eventually. Do you yeah. do you think looking at that? Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good outcome. Yeah. yeah. Number one. Yeah. So I think if you gave give her a. I don't know, another month or so in the, the turnout arena, just sort of give her a bit more time and then bring and her back. And maybe pop her on the walker for Yeah, you could do that. I'd probably give her a few weeks before we put her on the walker, just to let her have a little bit of time outside first, just right, sort of starting okay. to use it before she's got that sort of repetitive Yeah, so well, she can just do it in her own time. Yeah, absolutely. And then right. if things are looking all right, then bring her back in, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get to go out in the rain now. You don't get to have cosy stable anymore. <laughs> she's got some covering to keep it warm. <laughs> What was the last <laughs> time? Was it 688? Yeah. She's been on a diet the entire time. This is her slimmed down. Right. But on box rest, it's difficult to lose weight, isn't it? Not yeah. impossible, but well, she, she, she gets two cables a day and then a soaked hay at night. No. We're now going to see whether Maeve's has lost any weight. I think she's looking a little leaner, but you know, she's got. A Mabel belly. It's just her body shape. It is her body shape. You're the burlesque girl, aren't you? Whoa. <laughs> she all on the middle bit. Yeah, 38 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. not bad. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Take out that part there, which would then bring the eyelid down to that point and then a, and then this would come up and it would come the sweep would come up that way so it's not going to improve his ability to blink because he's he's lost past that ability because of the nerve damage and the and the and the and the skin becoming all sort of tough and leathery um, but it will limit the exposure of this zone and limit um, the exposure of his corner if you look at the cornea you can see the surface of the eye, you see how it got these irregularities oh, okay, there. Yeah. Now they were a lot worse last time you were here. The surface was was, was sort of inflamed, that's what we call keratitis. Um, this is looking a lot more settled, it's quieter. Mm -hmm. um, we still have got blood vessels there, but it's, it, this is more of a kind of chronic, long-standing thing rather than it being an active problem. So you could argue at the moment, well, given the fact his eye is quiet, it's comfortable, it's happy, the skin is looking better with the cream that I suggested, you know, are we rushing into doing something that isn't really going to benefit him? Um, and that's the bit I don't know. Yeah. The other thing that I didn't mention to you was that a couple of weeks ago when we had really bad wind, this bit under here got yeah. really quite swollen. It, it will. It will. And it's because it's getting windburnt. Right. So he, essentially what's happening is that the liquid that sits here, because he can't help it, the tears just run and pool there. They'll overflow over that part and it'll just get chapped. I can give you some eye ointment to put on that area which will help to protect there i mean we're still putting the ointment on every day maybe the bad weather cross fingers is behind us i don't think <laughs> we're going to february march yeah. so pops not but then you're going to fly season and then you could argue that is it better to do something before the flies come i don't have a crystal ball so there is no right or wrong answer i think the you know it's a lot of positive things today because his eye looks so so much better than when you first came in to see me and if you look at the area that we've operated down here you can barely tell that anything happened. There's no yeah. lumps of oh, there. no, there's, there's, nothing there. there's nothing there. So that's now giving us more options. I didn't have that option before. Now I do have that option. Yeah, you see, I, now I'm looking at it there. I'm thinking, because I just look at it, well, yeah, it's easy and straightforward for you. You know, you, you <laughs> can just not. close that. But no, I know it. It's no, not. I know it's not. But that's how my little mind looks at it, because I know that you're, you're brilliant at this sort of stuff. So, so what we'd have so, to do, we'd have to actually undermine all of this tissue under here create flaps to free it up and we have to rotate the skin up because this this skin is stuck down it's stuck to the bone there's, there's no freedom of movement there right that's so, why it looks distorted like this so we'd actually try and bring that up and out and then just chop out the, the least amount we can get away with but 
I, I don't want to encourage you into doing something that's not necessary. That isn't really necessary. He's comfortable. He's happy. He's seeing. He's doing okay. Why are we fiddling? Yeah. He's never going to have a perfect eye. What we should really be thinking, you know, we want to just give him that comfortable, happy existence. Well, we've already got there. Yeah. Yeah. We. Yeah. We have. I. I. I think we'll go middle ground. We'll just keep putting the cream on. Yeah. And try and get that skin a lot more supple so that if we are in a position in a few months time where it's swelling too often the, 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 the benefit of the surgery would be that you get less debris getting stuck onto a surface yeah. and potentially you reduce the amount of keratitis the inflammation of the cornea but it does not have any active inflammation of his cornea at the minute right so you could argue again does he need it yeah now he might need it i can't guarantee that he won't need it in a month six months a year but then last time you were here, we were talking about, you know, is the end in sight? And, yeah. you know, can we even get that far? And is it, you know, should we be thinking about more drastic things? Yeah. And, and, you and know, I think, I'm glad we didn't. I think because, because up until now, I felt that we're firefighting the whole time and trying to deal with a problem that's there. Whereas now I'm thinking, am I trying to look for ways to prevent any more problems in yeah. there? I know. It, it's that, it's that I know, but you have to strike balance. a balance. Yeah, you do. And I'm, I'm not sure that we are all happy that we're doing the right thing at this moment yeah, in time. Yeah, it doesn't feel quite. So maybe what right. we should do is go Leave with. It. I was just showing my my colleague actually was in looking at the eye and the skin. He said, I "Can't believe how much better skin looks." And I was telling him about the cream. Yeah. And I think he was saying, well, you know, "Why wouldn't we just keep going with the cream and just trying to get that skin to be more supple?" Yeah. And well, I, I don't disagree do with that. that. Well, I. I I think that feels like the most right thing to do yeah. for me right now. Um, so we'll carry on with that and you're not going anywhere. Yeah, we know that you're here. And and that, you know, the other thing, of course, we're doing it, it's like you said, that we could aggravate the area and if there's anything in there that is going to grow again, it, so it's, it's going to... The areas we've operated on, down the side of third eyelid, across the third eyelid, on the inside of the contractiver, under that skin, around that, that, that zone, there is nothing, it's flat. Yeah. There's no no evidence of tumour regrowth whatsoever. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, there are some little lumps and bumps around around the skin I there. I was going to ask you about yeah. those, but I don't think they grow. No, what I would do though with those is I would measure them and mark them. You could say, well, am I better off taking a knife and, and, and actually cutting these out and removing shelling those away? Now, the danger with doing that with sarcoids is you, again, you're well aware of this, it's you could create more it. aggravation, more spread. They are growing then obviously you either want to go down the route of using some either the, the Liverpool sarcoid cream, radiotherapy, or you remove them surgically. Yeah. And then thankfully they were far enough away from the eyeball itself. Yeah. I don't think they've grown over Good. the winter. Well, if they haven't grown, but... best leave them alone. Why don't we plan to see him again? Well, I'm happy Probably to see him not. as often as you want, but I was going to say, why don't we see him in you know, springtime? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I... It's all right. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Back on and coming home. So the only thing Hannes has had to remove today is a bit of his hair. So he's got a little shaved patch here. Though it was nice and dry and sunny in Penrith, it's been absolutely treacherous on the M6 on the way back. Frighteningly, we twice. Died. We didn't nearly die. Well, that's a little exaggeration. But our steps on the side of the lorry, which never come down, the the wind was so strong that we had to pull over on the side of the motorway and put the steps back up. Yeah, they've come down again, so we just stopped at T-Bay Services to put them back up and to find a way of securing them because the wind is so strong. It really was quite frightening out there. It's a little Heath Robinson, but with a bit of electrical tape. I've secured the step hopefully in place so that hopefully the wind's not going to catch it now and it's going to stay where it's supposed to be. So we're back home after a slightly scary drive back and unfortunately the lorry is making some horrible noises so we're not quite sure what's going on. I'll be calling Jeff who looks after it for us to see if he can come and have a look before we set off again on Wednesday. Mabel hasn't had freedom since the 11th of December. So this is the most movement that she's had since then. And look at her going straight for the haylage.
not interested in, in Hidda. He's going to keep her company in here tonight. But because Hidda's the boss down in the field, it'll be nice for him to spend a bit of time with her before she eventually goes back out and joins them all. Oh, JB's coming to see what's going on as well. Fillet string on a rug. Put that across. Here we go. I think he can. And Angel Eyes is going back out in the field with his buddies. He's already rolled, as you can see. Got himself nice and muddy. Monitor his eye like like we have been doing. Keep an eye on those sarcoids underneath. And if his eye gets swollen too often with being aggravated by the weather or by flies, then we'll think again about having that operation carried out to make his eye socket a little bit smaller. Paul's decided not to lead little jubbers back down to the field because Hoyts is in stable states tonight with our visitors so JB is going down to join the boys. You'll get into trouble with Tamara if he makes diverts. <laughs> she, she's running after him now. She'll catch him before he gets down there. Look Tamara's going down to check whether he's he's running over the daffodils. Oh you gotta laugh. She's very protective of her daffodils, quite rightly so. Now Hoyts is down here waiting to go into his favourite bedroom, Stable Stays. Now I don't usually put him in before our guests arrive, but we've got a young lady coming for her 13th birthday. She has no idea what she's coming to do. And it's always really lovely to just open the stable door and to have Hoytsy stood there and to see the look on people's faces when they suddenly realise what they're doing is just one of the most magic moments to see. Shall we let you in, Hoyts? He's probably wondering why his guests aren't in here. Because usually I say that I don't have him in here to start with, otherwise people don't listen to a word I say because they're too distracted by him. But every now and again, it just seems right to have him in here for when people arrive. He's just enjoying his tea. It's all nice and cosy in here with the infrared light on over there, the fairy lights and the nice soft fluffy covers on the beds which have electric blankets on too just to make sure everybody stays nice and warm and cosy overnight. You can see from here Hoitsy can chat to whoever is sleeping in the top bunk. Although he does have a habit of having a little kick on that partition or on the doorway at different times in the morning. There's no pattern to it. Sometimes he'll wake people up at four o'clock wanting his breakfast. Other times it might be six o'clock. He's even been known sometimes to let people sleep till seven, but that's quite unusual. I've just checked in our really lovely Stable Stays guests, Mum who's in a wheelchair and her daughter Scarlett, her 13th birthday. Hoitzer was so gentle with them both. It was, it was really lovely. So I'm gonna hope that they're gonna have a really special night tonight. Her mum, Scarlett's mum said to me that it was all about creating those memories and she wants to create a memory book for her daughter. So yeah, quite emotional, but really lovely that they're in. Um, there's Niki news. Unfortunately, Chris wasn't able to get here today. So she's having another night in and Chris is gonna come in the morning and pack her foot out and put her shoe on. We've got next door here, we've got little rainbow boy in, Nero. Jodie and Lisa brought him in today for a clean up. He's having a night in while Hidda's off with Mabel outside and obviously we've got teddy bear in here as well 
busy munching, quite happy in the stable, because we know he loves his box rest, don't you? Yeah. You're a very good boy. I have to say this evening I'm, I'm feeling a little anxious because I, I know that today the Fenway Foundation, who we work in affiliation with for the sanctuary, they do so much good for the Frisian horse. They do an awful lot of research. They interviewed me back end of last year for their new podcast, The Frisian Advocate, and I understand that it's gone live on on their streaming service today on Spotify and I, I just feel too anxious to listen to it which is ridiculous because I'm talking all the time on camera but yeah I will tonight have to listen to myself being interviewed on there and yeah try not to worry about it too much and what people think because I shouldn't worry about what people think it's human nature we can all do that from time to time anyway it's been a long day the first, the start of the week, and with some good news, and hopefully we're going to have some really good news for this young man on Wednesday as well. Are you in bed, little man? Hello, Nero. Are you having a nice sleep? Hey, He's your good boy. Has you got Niki news keeping you company? Oh, I'm sorry for waking you. You'll get your rug fixed while you're on box rest. Eh? Get that strap fixed on your rug. Here's the noodles. And here's the teddy bear. Just come out to give him his evening meds. Everyone was telling me that I'm not allowed to shave his little tash off. He's got a little curly tash going on there. I think it might have to go. Yush. Yush. <laughs> I haven't got anything in my hand. You are a little licky monster, aren't you? Hmm? I'm going to go and get your paracetamol. Just mixed his paracetamol up. With some alpha A and some carrots. And little Twixies come round to see me. Oh, and we've got D as well. Hello, girlies. Hello, Twix. Am I allowed to stroke you this evening? Oh, well, thank you. That's very nice of you. That's very generous. If I put my hand in front of her nose, then she usually bashes me with her paw. Should we do a demonstration? There we go. <laughs> ah, you're funny. I'm only allowed to stroke the top of her head, and sometimes I'm allowed to stroke along her back and on her tail. But Dee only ever lets me stroke her when she's eating. Hey, Twix. Give him a handful of treats while I take teddy bear's meds through. 